Hey everybody, just want to give a quick demo of this little side project I've been working on called MDS or My Docker Scripts. Um, technically it's a, a container orchestration framework. I haven't modeled after Kubernetes, the, the big uh, Google project, but obviously this is not up to Google standards. It's something I just kind of cooked up in my, my spare time. Uh, but it is a, it's how I'm running my website and a couple other things like Nextcloud. Um, so I want to just give a quick demo of how to use it. So what is MDS? It's essentially a make wrapper for Docker scripts that allows you to search, create, and maintain different Docker services. Anything that can be a Docker container can run on this. You can even, it automatically builds containers if you want to just write your own. Um, it also uses Docker Compose. It can really do all sorts of things. Um, so let's just jump into it. So the first command you need to know is make. Everything is based off of make just makes it easy and also makes it parallelizable, which we'll see that in a minute. Uh, but if you just run make, you get this little cow telling you how to use it. It says make, run, make init to create a service. Okay, so let's do make init. Okay, boom. So I don't know if you guys can read this, but it says would you like to add a container now? I'm going to say yes, because I do. Now it says please enter the name of the container to search for. Uh, just keep it simple. These nginx here, and I, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of options here. But I'm just going to go with the original official build of nginx. It's just nginx, and it's pulling the container, and it's got it, so we're good to go. And then it automatically opens up your editor, and it opens up this weird file. Um, that this is actually the configuration for your nginx container. Um, a lot of these options here are just pulled automatically from the container. So uh, it exposes this port, it has these environment variables set, fairly basic stuff. And like I said, this is a, a fairly basic um, container. So there's honestly not too much more that we need to do. Um, I will say that there's a difference here because I already have containers running. I need to make sure I don't have this port already exposed on a different address, which I do, spoiler alert. Um, so how can I check that? So I can either open up another window, or I could even do it inside Vim, if you're feeling fancy. And the command would be make check ports. And this just gives you a list of all the ports that you have in use in which service is attached to them. So as I can see, um, oh, I actually don't have port 80 used. Okay, I was wrong. Either way, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in on 8092 because I feel like it. So let's go ahead and do that. 8092. Okay, cool. And then now I'm ready to go. I can just, this is all I need to do for this file, change that one setting. So I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to save this file. This is going to say, would I like to add another container? Sure, why not? So let's search again. Uh, Let's Encrypt is a fun one. I like Linux server Let's Encrypt. L Linux server has a bunch of Docker containers that are really great if you haven't used them. Um, but here we go, pulling again. Sometimes this can take a while, depending. As soon as I say that, it finishes. Okay, so here we go. This is a second service, and as you can see, it has a little bit, a little more environment variables. I don't really care about them. Um, one thing I am going to delete here. I don't want to map this, so I'm just going to ignore this. And again, check the ports. So you can just kind of do whatever configuration you need. Just do whatever. Um, and then I'll show you in a little bit how how this is actually used. And it's based on this line right here. Um, but as far as using it, yeah, I'm pretty much done with these. I have all this other stuff in here that doesn't matter right now. So I just saved that. If I want to add another container, I'm going to say no. And now it is starting all of my services at once. I think it's supposed to do it in parallel, but since I already have them running, it doesn't 
but that's fine. Um, so as I, as you can see, all these things are running. And if I go back into this nginx file, mds.sh, I have this port 8092 mapped out. So let's go ahead and move this bad boy to a different window here. Let's open Vivaldi. Probably should have had this up before, but who plans ahead? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just simply go to the IP address of my server. This is the local IP address, so it'll be different for each computer. Um, if you're running this on your computer that you're working on, you can just do localhost. Like I said, it's a little different. And then if I go to 8092, which is the port, I see Nginx. So that's the container that we just downloaded. I just search Nginx, it pulled the defaults, and it's ready to go. So if I go back here, I can make cmd equals stop Nginx. It stopped Nginx. I can go back here, and the site doesn't exist anymore. And then to bring it back up, I can, here we go. Well, there we go. To bring it back up, I can just make Nginx again already exists, it's starting it, and it has started, and voila, it's back up. It's magic. It's not magic. It's just scripts, really. Um, also added, where was it? Let's Encrypt. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And instead of deleting, I'm going to disable it. Let's see what that looks like. And it's disabled. So now, I will have to actually before I do that let me stop it cmd equals remove so now I'm essentially deleting the docker container for let's encrypt because I already have a proxy running I don't want it to mess with anything I'm just gonna get it out the way so now I can go and disable it by just removing the uh, dot d and then if I try and do make let's encrypt there's nothing to do um, so it's just it's not going to work so that way if I were to go through and do make all again I don't know if you can see it, but you have to take my word it didn't start the, the let's encrypt um, but there are some things that it does do so if I were to let's see which one should I point out let's go to the proxy when you pull the master branch you're just going to have the proxy that's the only container you're going to have because it's a little special. Let's go in here. So in here we have this file called autoconfig.sh which basically generates the load balancing proxy configuration on the fly based on what directories you have enabled and what exposed ports you have enabled. So let me actually go back up So I'm back in the Nginx config again. Let's look at a couple of these other options. So I have this 8092 open. And as you saw, I was able to get to it here. But if I want to have it mapped to a domain name and have HTTPS installed on it, I need to use this variable here to expose the port. This is exposing it to the load balancer, which is a little different than just a Docker exposed port. So I just go here, uncomment it, change it to the port that I have down there, and that's it. So I go out of here, go back, let me reset the proxy here, and now it takes a little minute, not going to lie. If I were to go to nginx.reeves.dev, like I said, this part kind of takes a little bit. Oh, I did have a port in, well, this was port 80. Interesting. Well, this is new. 
So I don't know why it's... Oh, there we go. Okay, I think I was just too early. It was all... Okay, but it's here. Nginx.reads.dev. So, crisis averted here. What did that do? So if I look here, it took the Nginx directory, and that was the name of the subdomain that it used for the, um, the load balancer. So I have reads.dev as my domain, and I have Nginx as the actual container right here, and that's what it used and made the subdomain. So I also have things like Nextcloud. Like, so I should be able to just go to nextcloud.reads.dev. Boom, there it is. This is still a work in progress, so don't, don't look at that. Um, and then, of course, I also just have redgirlreads.dev and that gross CSS. Um, but yeah, so those work fine and dandy. So let's kind of jump into how the proxy works. So let's go back into proxy directory. You definitely cannot read this, but uh, there's a config folder, and that is where it generates the load balancer config using the auto config sh script and then also uses this little domain.txt thing uh, that's just that's a time saver really if you don't have that it's just going to prompt you every time um, so you can put it put your domain in that file and then it'll automatically um, just say hey this is this is my domain but what auto config.sh does is it just goes through what gives you the, uh, yeah, so this is where it asks if you don't have it. But it checks for every file that has exposed port and ends in a, a dot D. This is not readable at all. I really need to get, go back through this. Um, but then it just generates um, Nginx configs based on those variables. So here we have the name, dot domain, all that fancy stuff. And if we look at it, it places it here. Nginx I default, yep. And this is what it makes every single time. And as you can see, we have Nginx right here using this port, which is the port we specified in that, that file. Um, let's get rid of that, okay. Uh, but the astute of you will also notice that some of these well, maybe it actually doesn't show it yet. Well, you don't necessarily have to have the services running on the same host. So as you see here, this server is 0.3. This server is 0.14. But if I were to go to stepflix.reads.dev, that's still the same. It's still everything right here ready to go. So, yeah, it is handling the load balancing and proxy for a VM that's running on a different server. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, okay, so this one is a lot simpler. So I just specify the port, specify the host IP. This is a new one. Um, this is basically saying if the IP address that you want the proxy to point to is different than the actual server that it's running on, then give it here. Um, and then I override some functions to make sure it doesn't do anything. And it looks like I'm declaring these functions for the first time, but actually I'll show you in a second that these are actually declared somewhere else. Um, but then yeah, that's, that's basically all the magic that the user has to do. If you have a VM somewhere else that you want load balanced and proxied with everything else, just give it the port and the IP in one file and you're done. And that's it. That's all you got to do. But again, diving deeper into the weeds, let's look at the top level MDS script. This is where the magic really happens. So what this line is right here is saying is basically if there is a file in the upper directory named MDSH, then source it, which in Linux and Bash essentially just mean take whatever functions you have declared there and apply them here. So let's go to that file, up a directory, 
main MDSH, which is different from the one we were just at. And here I have a bunch of variables, arrays, and functions declared here. And these are essentially all the different the functions that can be called from the individual scripts. So I have start, stop, restart, a whole bunch of other things. Um, you know, starting checks to make sure it doesn't already exist. Um, there's some functions that you can run things before you start the container, things after you start the container. Um, right here it is. So when you call run, which is the default command, it checks to make sure the function, the container is not already running, and if it does, it quits. Then it checks to see if you have a Docker file, and if you do, it builds it. And then it runs pre-config, then it runs the actual run command, which is literally docker run and all the arguments you gave it in that other file. Um, it also creates a network and a database if you have that declared, which I'll show an example of that um, in a second. But And then it just runs it, the normal docker run commands. Uh, then it calls post config, so if you have that overwritten, it'll do something there. And then it says, okay, it's running, ta-da. Um, and so these functions here are what we were looking at earlier when we did make init. Um, init calls search, which calls new, which new just generates that initial config file. Um, and this little magic piece here, it's inspecting the Docker container and saying, hey, what ports am I supposed to have? What volumes am I supposed to have? And what uh, environment variables? The environment variables, you can have like good hundred of those and it's just like it gets pretty obnoxious to be honest with you and I don't know a better way to do that but it is what it is okay uh, is there anything else in here search and it uh, yeah that's that's basically it for that file I will say you can just if you're in the top level you don't have to do make a knit every time you could do just make search and I bring you up to the search page and I can do nginx again or whatever I don't know. I'm not going to do that, but that's what you can do. Uh, so let's look at some other examples here. Is NetData cool? Nope, it is not cool. Um, I guess it's cool that you can add arbitrary commands in here, but that's really not it. Really not cool at all. Let's see them. Okay, this one's kind of cool. I took out all of the extra commented things. This was a really early on container, like I've had this one for a while, so I've kind of, as I've added things to the MDS script, they haven't always ended up here. Uh, but let's just go top to bottom and see what's happening. So we're sourcing the functions from the first file. We're, declare, we're declaring some variables here, saying the name of the container is gonna be key cloak, the name of the database is going to be keycloak-db. The name of the network is keycloak-net. Um, this is the actual image. Like if you were going to do docker pool, I would do docker pool jboss slash keycloak. And um, this is the name for the database image. Almost always MariaDB or MySQL. It's just, it is what it is. Um, exposed port, that's for the load balancer. That's um, and again, the, the end user doesn't have to know that. They just have to know keycloak.domain.com and the load balancer handle is mapping to this port. Um, this little piece here, I don't have it 100% 100 perfect, but basically what it does is if the container is not running and you try and run it, it'll prompt you for a username and password, which it works, but it also prompts you when you're trying to shut down the container and other things, which is kind of annoying. Um, but it, it prompts you for a username and password, and that's what's being passed in here as the uh, the username and password for the Keycloak user, so the initial admin, so that way you don't have to hard code any passwords. Um, this is actually hard coded, I don't know why, uh, doesn't really matter. The, the databases aren't publicly exposed, so it, it really doesn't matter. You'd have to get in through Keycloak and then get to the database, but um, that's, that's difficult to do. 
Uh, well, I guess, yeah, these are just extra arguments that you pass to key cloak, the extra arguments that you pass into the database. Um, this is, again, another Docker run com command because this is a separate container. Um, and then this dollar sign one, that's what actually runs the command. So when you call, like I said, run was the default command, or you might do cmd equals stop, whatever. This is saying, hey, run the function. Everything before this is just defining things. This last line here is the only thing that's actually taking action. So this is one of the most important lines, and it's two characters. So keep that in mind if you're fiddling around with things. This one has very similar stuff. I thought I had a cool one here, guys. Is Home Assistant the cool one? Nope. That's a... Uh, I mean, you can mount different volumes. I really should have prepared ahead. Um, I guess this is a good example. You can run commands and stop multiple things at a time. I didn't mean for these things to be running earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and stop them now. You just call make command equals stop, and then list out all the uh, services you want to stop. You can have the dot D or not have the dot D. It doesn't matter. It'll stop them both. Kind of taking a while, but it's it's stopping them. Okay. And if I wanted to start them back, I could also just do make them again. And if I pass in the dash J flag, then it stops them in parallel. At least it's supposed to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really have a better way to demonstrate that. It was kind of supposed to do that, but see, does it look better here? Yeah, okay. So now you see it checked both of them before it started it. So now you can see it's kind of parallel. That's just kind of gross, though, honestly. Let's just go ahead and just stop that. Um, do I have any other cool things to show? Went through. Actually, might be it. Wow. We went through everything. Trying to see if there's any cool stuff. Oh, I do want to show an example of what to do in like a pre-config. So let's go to GitLab. Okay. Uh, okay, read them or whatever. That's fine. Uh, so GitLab is kind of like GitHub, but it's a self-hosted thing. Uh, I'm just going to call it GitLab. I'm using this image, basic stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, I will say if you don't need a database, you leave this variable empty, con db. And it's not going to make one for you. Same with the con net. Like this is just one container. I don't need database or anything like that. Um, I got some basic stuff here. Just mounting some volumes, exposing some ports, basic Docker stuff. But I also have this pre-config option. Um, and so basically, you can do whatever you want to do here. But what this is doing is copying a, a Ruby file, a little config file and putting it where I have mapped the GitLab config. Um, I was doing that just as a creature comfort, just so I can edit it locally and then copy it over later when I'm finished. Uh, you can really do whatever. It's, it's up to you. And that's kind of the, the big power with MDS, I'd say. You can just overwrite any of the functions that you want. So I was working with Bookstack. That one's fairly new. Um, I'm going to leave some examples here. Okay, this is a good example. So I have a database and a network. And I'm linking them together. Bada bing, bada boom. Using some variables. I should have started with this one. Yeah. So this one, as you can see, this has a little more built out. This was me working on the uh, getting it to only ask you for a password when you're starting the container. Um, for whatever reason, that's been bugging me. But I have some examples here. If you want to do something before the Docker run, you put in pre-commit, pre-config or post-config. Um, 
these methods were overwritten with the uh, the Stepflix, the service that's on a different server. Um, normally, if you overwrite these, you would also overwrite the where is it con IP to tell it to go to a different server. Well, you also could say, you know what, I'm just gonna do this and do some Docker Compose stuff. Dash up, whatever. I don't know how to use Docker Compose, but that's basically it. Um, and then instead of calling the Docker Run command, it's gonna call this command. So if you had something that was a Python service that's not related to Docker at all, and you wanted to call like Python blah da pi, I don't know. You could do this, and this would call this the start function would be this function instead of the Docker run. Um, it gets a little confusing because it'll still check and blah blah blah, but you could override those functions as well. So all the power really is in, in these individual functions on a per service level. Um, and this is all desired state config. So what that means is basically I just have this little file and it can be anywhere and the uh, make all my changes to it and I just call from it once and then the server is off doing its own thing. It's not checking this, uh, this config, it's not doing anything else. That potentially could be something to move forward to in the future but that's a lot of work. This is literally just, hey this is what I want it just makes it and then it just leaves it alone. So this config file can be as big or as small as you want. It can be on a beefy server, it can be on a Raspberry Pi, it doesn't matter. It's just a text file for it. All the actual work is done wherever this is called. So, uh, but I think I've blabbered on enough. That's uh, basically, oh I wanted to run through the make file. Okay, very quickly. So these are the commands you can run. You can clean which on the master file or master branch would also um, delete the uh, pretty much every folder except proxy so be careful running this one um, proxy reset is what generates that config file like I was showing you earlier we saw the new search and init but we didn't see we did see check ports but we didn't see list let's see what that does really fast Make list, okay. It just shows the running services and their databases. Nothing fancy, um, but there it is. And that's it, guys. It's uh, it's a lot under the hood, but the users really only have to mess with one config file per service. I think it's very straightforward. Um, I'm definitely going to keep working on this in the future. Eventually, I would like to see this growing to multiple hosts. So we kind of saw that con IP variable. I'd like to be able to have multiple um, con IPs I guess and having it in a distributed cloud environment and all that fancy fun stuff but uh, this is what I got right now so thank you guys have a good night